Hello everybody, welcome to another installment of Biology in the Basement with your host, Mr. Andrako. Let's give it up for Bonesy. He's our man. We've got about two lectures left with you, Bonesy. That's about it. Just a couple more to go and, and we're going to uh, send you on your way. We'll send you back to Homer High School, um, where you can spend your summer there and not scaring me every time I come down the bottom of the stairs. You can imagine, if you would know, the stairs are right there, and for the first few weeks of Bonesy being here, I would come downstairs, and there's like an automatic light that turns on and off, you know, to save energy. So when I walk in here, the light will click on, and I'll just see this body, and he just scares the crap out of me every time. For like the first few weeks, he scares the boys, and it's, and we all laugh about it. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, we'll um, we'll send you back to Homer High School uh, so that hopefully you'll be able to teach the kids um, in a school again, and not just be this weird skeleton in my basement. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, way to go, Bonesy. We're happy to have you. All right, the purpose of this video is to pick up where we left off on human reproduction. We are going to specifically talk today about um, the last steps of fertilization. We're also going to talk about the menstrual cycle, you know, real fun stuff. Um, but luckily, we don't have to do the menstrual cycle lab. I will just give you the walkthrough of the menstrual cycle lab. It does a great job of bridging the gap between um, the endocrine system and the reproductive system. It helps to understand how hormones work. They're not lightning fast like the nervous system. And usually people get the questions wrong and I have to go over it anyway. So we'll just save that step of you doing the real tedious graphing part uh, and move on. But of course, before we do that, we need to have a fact of the day. And that is that termites are being researched as a possible renewable energy source as they can produce up to two liters of hydrogen from ingesting a single sheet of paper, making them one of the planet's most efficient bioreactors. So if we could just start harvesting all the hydrogen that they're producing from these sheets of paper that we're just recycling anyways, right? We can get energy. Be, it's weird to think of a termite as a bioreactor. We're going to revisit the termite when we talk about symbiotic relationships because turns out termites can't even digest wood or paper in this case. I don't want to spoil it for you. Okay, so we talked about ejaculation, right? The release of sperm from the male. It travels um, up the cervix all the way into some, yes, go the wrong way to a dead end, um, and travel all the way up into the fallopian tube where the fertilization occurs. That's a common region's question. Where does fertilization occur? Boom, in the fallopian tube. Then travels down to the uterus where it undergoes implantation, but we'll hit that word in a minute. Um, semen, as I said, is that liquid mixture. Sperm is very delicate. It must be kept at a set pH from the point of passing through the urethra, through the vagina, until it gets to the fallopian tube where it's a little bit more hospitable of an environment. Um, but the reason why the vagina and the urethra is so acidic is it's part of our immune system, right? We got to protect the holes of our body and, you know, to sound disgusting, that's just one of the ways that we do it. We keep an acidic environment there. Nothing getting in. All right. Sperm cell, smallest cell of the body for every, you know, animal on average. And the egg cell, in comparison, is the largest cell of the body. And even though the sperm cell is the smallest, it has just a few important components, and that's all it needs. It needs some mitochondria to power the tail to get to its destination, which is the equivalent of a couple miles. Of 
course, we got to have some enzymes in there to digest this jelly layer protecting. And we have to be able to pierce the uh, outer membrane and insert our haploid nucleus, right? The sperm cell includes just 23 chromosomes to find the other 23 chromosomes in there. But as you'll notice, also what travels in there is a centriole. Does anybody remember what the centriole does? Right, it helps animal cells divide. So as soon as it gets in there, it's going to start that mitosis process going as quickly as possible. And what helps cells divide but centrioles. So it brings one of those along as well. Okay, on to the menstrual cycle. Uh, the menstrual cycle is on average a 28-day cycle that happens in humans. It can be different for different uh, species, right? Some animals only have a menstrual uh, cycle or go into heat or estrus, whatever you want to call it, once a year, twice a year, three times a year. Fema human females do this every month or 28 days. So we break this down into four steps in which the egg is prepared, the egg is released, and um, either the egg um, is resting in its body or it is going to be flushed out and reset the stage. So for the first few days, we have, um, it's, it usually starts out as menstruation. And then the, the next few days, we build up the lining of the uterus. While the lining of the uterus is building up, at the same time, the egg is being prepared for release. So we're coordinating a lot of events. We're menstruating. We're getting ready to build up the lining of the uterus to start this process again. We got to get an egg out, and then we have to see if the egg is fertilized. If not, then we have to release another hormone to start the menstruation process again. It's quite the uh, cycle, but you can see why it's regulated by hormones. A lot to control over a relatively slow, you know, process amount over days. So the first way that we look at this is in the phases. The first 14 or so days, they usually call the follicular phase, where we are preparing the egg for release. On day 14... Day 14 is the ovulation day where the egg is released from the uterus. While this is going on, we are also building up what is called the corpus luteum. In Latin, that translates to yellow body. This is the tissue that is meant to be a nice little pillow for the fertilized egg to land on before we start to grow a womb. Well, if the egg is not fertilized, then we must remove this yellow body through the process of menstruation and start all over again. So, here are the hormones that are involved. This is the rough um outline of how they would go. I would make you plot each of these points and you curse my name the whole time and I love every minute of it, but that's not happening this time. Anyways, as you can see, we can look at things like the follicle stimulating hormone where it builds a little bit in concentration. The follicle is being stimulated. Hey, prepare that egg for release, and then it drops until it spikes on like day 12 or 13. And why does it spike on day 12 or 13? Because that is when the egg breaks, right? Same thing with the luteinizing hormone. The luteinizing hormone shoots right up and says, hey, the egg is traveling down the fallopian tube. Let's spend the next couple days building up 
the uterine lining. So the luteinizing hormone is sending that message to be done. Down here, coming from the ovary, these guys are up in the pituitary gland, by the way. Um, down here in the ovary itself, right, we have other messages being sent, right? As the estrogen increases, so does the lining of the uterus. Just like as progesterone increases, so does that signal the menstruation of the uterine lining or the breakdown. And so each one of these hormones, kind of in the simplest terms that I can put them, each one of these hormones has kind of their own little job in regulating all these different events that are happening over this 28-day cycle, which we thank our hormones for controlling and not our nervous system. It would be much more painful. So these weird diagrams, you know, they show the egg in the follicle being developed, and then boom, day 14, we break. Um, the... Um, lining of the uterus is also thickening until we begin menstruation where we start to um, shed that uterine lining. And so the pituitary gland and the ovaries are signaling all of these hormones to prepare the egg, to release the egg, to prepare the womb, to reset the womb if needed so that we can um, Maybe have a baby, and if not, try again in another 28 days. Okay, so let's talk about what happens if we do get a baby, right? We have fertilization occur, we get a zygote. What happens to that zygote? It starts to divide through the process of mitosis, right? So you've got one cell and then it splits into two cells. That's mitosis, right? And we get four cells and eight cells and so on and so forth. Well, when we have a solid ball of cells that's unrecognizable, we call that an embryo. Now, there are different types of embryos. When it's a truly solid ball where there's just, you know, eight, 12, so many cells, then it is called a morula. Eventually, though, it can't be a solid, solid ball. It has to go hollow because we need to get nutrients in there. There would be no way to get nutrients into those inner cells. They would die. We don't have a circulatory system already constructed. So it's a hollow ball of cells. We're still relying on diffusion. Then we go through this process called gastrulation, where it folds into a two-layered embryo. And that is still an embryo, still unrecognizable, until then each one of these different layers, as they're called, these germ layers, decide to take on different parts of the body. And then once it starts to become a recognizable something alien baby, we call it a fetus, right? So, right, we start out with our zygote. And we begin mitosis until we have half dozen cells. Then we've got our hollow ball, so we can still get nutrients in there. And then we fold into ourselves so that we can still have nutrients going. And then you get all these uh, different layers. And each layer becomes a different part of the body. One layer decides to be skin, bone, and your spine, and your nervous system, and so on and so forth. Um, and this process of becoming different is simply called differentiation. And so this is that process where we start to see a baby developing its recognizable features. The process when the baby is developing in the womb is called pregnancy. The length of the pregnancy is called gestation. These are two different terms because different species have different gestation lengths. For example, the average female human is about nine months. And when we say nine months, it's actually closer to 10. Um, uh, the average cow is also around nine or 10 months. A horse takes almost a year. Um, elephants are like a year. Certain whales are up to two years. For their gestation period, you know, so uh, nine months is bad, but uh, 
being pregnant for two whole years as a whale? Wow, that'd be tough. Um, another term I mentioned was implantation. That's when that blastula implants itself onto the lining of the uterus. Once we start to form this womb and it has to nourish the fetus, we form the placenta. And then inside it is fluid, which is called amniotic fluid. And that is a shock-absorbing fluid surrounding the baby so that if a woman is, you know, moving around, running and doing things, the baby's not going to be harmed by any of that because it's just floating around in this nice little shock-absorbing fluid. Right? So here's your baby, right? And most of the time its head is in the upward direction, right? Then doctor knows it's go time when the head ends up uh, down here. Um, <clears throat> the uterus, as you can see, has grown quite a bit in size from the last time we looked at it. It is the womb that houses the baby. Um, right here is your placenta that is going to get the nutrients and the wastes to and from mother to baby. They will travel through the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is one of the coolest things that um, meets the placenta. Um, really, the coolest thing is the placenta. I should correct myself. Um, the placenta has the ability to send all the good stuff that mom has in her blood and take all the bad stuff that the baby has in its blood without mom's blood and baby's blood ever mixing. There's like a membrane, if you follow, all the way around these blood vessels where they create a reservoir where... The blood goes into this reservoir, but only the nutrients diffuse into the baby's blood and the waste products diffuse out. So larger objects or other things don't end up in the baby. That's why babies usually don't get, you know, they don't get bacterial or viral infections because they can't pass through this membrane. But things like alcohol and other chemicals and smoking and drugs and things like that, those chemicals are small enough to pass through those membranes. So that's why they always encourage you to not drink or use drugs while you are pregnant. It ruins organ development. <clears throat> okay, I believe this is one of the last slides, right? Where fetus becomes baby through birth. The first few years of its life, it's an infant or toddler, and then it is a child when it is a smaller version of a human unable to reproduce. It's adolescent years, um, 12 to 15, that's in boys. Of course, girls mature uh, much faster. Um, this kicks in a little bit earlier, and... Um, <clears throat> This is the process of going through puberty, right? Puberty is not a one-day event. It is a multiple-year process of growing, developing, changing. You guys are going to be having your final growth spurts in college, and that's still part of puberty. So, um, <clears throat> so all of that is going on uh, as you grow and develop and become, in the eyes of science, an adult, right? An adult is an individual of a species who is able to sexually reproduce. And so that's what puberty gets us. And that's it. Anybody want to hug? You did it. You made it to the end of this 121 slideshow. Good job. All right. That's all I got for you. I'll send you the homework with this when um, I release this video on to Google Classroom. So... Have a good one and way to go. We made it through the human body.